Hey guys, Kev here. And I wanted to do a comparison video of the CKF or Custom Knife Factory Rotten Design Evo or Evolutions. And I have the 2.0 and I have the 3.0 here. Now I do have different configurations of each. I would love to have the same configuration, but um, they didn't do this configuration in the 3.0, which is very sad. It honestly pisses me off, but anyway, uh, I want to talk about some things I've noticed. I've now had the 3.0, I've had two versions of it, a micarta black wash version and this dark tie version, um, uh, with the hand satin. And there's some things I've noticed that are similar, some things that are a little different, some things that... I would like to change that kind of stuff. So real quick, let me see if I can crank that down a little bit because honestly, don't need it to swing and crush me. There we go. So you can set these to be a little bit tighter if you don't want to lose your nails. I may have went too far on that. I like a good middle ground. Um, obviously, I want it to close on its own. Let's just see if I can. There we go. Now they're probably about the same. Um, I have an O-ring in this one, and there's a specific reason for that. And then this one, I do not. Let me actually grab it's a T10. So it's a T8. I'm just going to check all the screws. It's tight. This should be a 10. Check the hardware. I did a clip swap, um, which is something I'll talk about. I have noticed the hardware is steel, which is interesting. Uh, you'd think on a knife this expensive it would be titanium, but they want it to be strong. It does make sense, and I guess people aren't going to go crazy anodizing it. Um, so anyway, the 2.0 is one of my favorite knives of all time. Just a quick run through. Um, it's a John Sorensen des design. It's um, from Custom Knife Factory, but it's made in China by, uh, pretty sure the company is Kevin John. Um, they're kind of known for like making clones, I guess, before, and now they do high-end production. Not sure who else they work for, uh, but they do pretty good work from uh, what I've seen from Custom Knife Factory. The only downsides I've noticed are some sort of action-y, tweaky QC things, and uh, detents tend to be light. Now, that could be CKF asking for that, so that's, you know, totally... Um, not a fact that's just an observation on the detents um i love this knife because of the size i had a 1.0 in for review it's just absolutely massive too big annoyingly big honestly um this guy on the other hand is just uh really comfortable in the hand let me uh, raise that light up a little bit see if i can avoid the shadows a little bit um just a really good size for me personally. If I grip it back here, it basically just melts into my, my hand. The, the grooves are perfect for me, and it just fits my hand like a glove. And then, obviously, you have the choil that I love. Choke up. Again, finger grooves are nice. Yes, it gets a little bit thin here, which isn't the greatest thing, but it's still very comfortable. Uh, some Vox style jimping would be cool. This jimping is here, but I almost never touch it when I'm actually like gripping the knife. Really good sheep's foot blade. One of the best hollow grinds ever. Um, you have those, obviously, external stops, which is really nice. And this knife is known for its action. Drop shut guillotine. If you tune it to, you can have it just, you know, cut your finger off. There is no play at all. And there wasn't before either. It's just, I tightened it down a little bit. Um, you do have this dark tie bark pattern sort of thing on this side with the same on the clip. Now, the clip that I had on this is actually this one. And this is the clip from the 3.0. So they seem to be interchangeable. I'm told that they've been updated a little bit. Uh, but I think maybe 
I was talking to the person who made this, Johnny T, on Instagram, and he said the new ones are chamfered up here. I think maybe he just means his, not the 3.01. So I think they're identical from factory. Um, so I went ahead and swapped them because I was like, I'm going to carry this one. It'd be kind of cool, right? Um, it works really well left-handed. That's one of the things I loved about the 2.0 is you have this huge clip, right? It's kind of a hallmark of the design. And it makes it to where left-handed, you're just, you're not going to be on this lock bar. You would have to be in this position to not use the knife, not be able to flick it. The only spot is right here. So you can either climb up here and flick it like that, or you just do a normal grip. You're right on the edge of that clip, and you can fire it out right there. Very comfortable. Again, the detent, rather light on this. I'm sure if I tried hard enough, shake it out like that. Um, but it's kind of passable because the thumb flick is so good and the action on the close is so good. And that's kind of custom knife factories thing is they're all about the guillotine. And usually a way to get a guillotine is to have a uh, lighter lock bar pressure, which means lighter detent. So is it too light? I don't think so. I mean, with the thumb, you can literally just gun it out with this hole no problem and with the reverse flick it's pretty pretty uh, effortless to get it out what i love about this model is it's got the carbon fiber show side it's my favorite thing about this knife it's even milled out in there you can see they milled out pockets in that carbon fiber to make it even lighter and same on this side it's a stupid light knife for the size and that's what drew me to this carbon fiber version. I absolutely love it. Um, so then it also has this gorgeous belt satin, two-way belt satin. Um, probably my favorite type of finish on a blade. Then enters the 3.0. And when I first got the 3.0 in the micarta version i really didn't even like it honestly um i hated the finish i hated the micarta i did not understand why they didn't just do this version it would be so much more popular out of the gate if they just did this version instead of that micarta one right but they did the all gray stone or all gray bark um one with the belt satin and then they did this one which is the dark tie and then they did a micarta with black wash and then an all blacked out one. That's pretty cool. Um, so I picked the wrong one, which is my fault. I picked the micarta one. But anyway, I sold that quickly and I was able to pick this up. This is the dark tie. You get that Timascus pivot collar or Zerkutai pivot collar. I thought it came in the Zerkutai clip. It does not. It comes with this clip. Uh, but I quickly took this clip off of this knife, and I'm having another one made, so I will have one for each at some point. Um, but I think that looks pretty dope. The collar is only on one side, which seems odd, but, um, you know, that way it doesn't interfere with the color, so it kind of works. Um, I may try to see if I can strip that and have it look like this. That would be cool. Um, but then you can see here you have this hand satin, and you have the horizontal sort of, I guess it's hand setting all around. Yeah. Uh, which, I don't know. I just personally prefer a belt satin. And then you get that cool stone wash up there. I would take this 100 times out of 100 over this. Now, is this cool? Yeah. I like a hand satin. I just prefer uh, a belt satin, especially a two-way awesome one like that. Um, this one, I just uh, took the o-ring out so here's a big difference about these knives other than the the size so you guys can see the size i don't know if you heard that just fire out but it sounded awesome um there's your size so essentially it's a little bit harder to see with the um camera angle but you're getting half an inch extra on the 3.0 you're getting a quarter inch on the blade and a quarter inch on the handle how much does that translate in hand in pocket? A good bit, but not obnoxious. So here is this knife in this back grip. Again, finger grooves, all that good stuff. You can see how much is sticking out. When I grip this one, you have less sticking out. Again, it's going to amount to about a quarter inch. And then when I get up into the choil, you can see have about that much. 
and I have about that much. Again, about a quarter inch. <laughs> you can see choked up in this position, choil to choil here, you have about a quarter inch extra blade over here. So that's your size difference. The hollow grind is, to me, it feels still very deep. Um, but not quite as deep as this. This feels, oh man, maybe it's close, but this feels like so thin you can almost feel your finger on the other side, right? Where this one, yeah, it's close. Oh, damn, it's close. So maybe it is the same. Um, so those are obvious differences. Now, something that's very important to note difference-wise is the pivot design. So one thing I harped on with this one and I hated on with this one, and I have a video out there disassembling this knife and it's epically bad on my part. It's called Epic Fail. I think it's Evo 2.0 Disassembly Epic Fail. And I got a lot of flack for that one. And what I meant by Epic Fail was me. I struggled in that video and made a fool of myself. I freaking scratched the shit out of the pivot or the scale. I slipped out because I was trying to disassemble this. There was so much Loctite in there. I don't know if it was from me or the previous owner, but I couldn't get it out. And I just was like cranking on this thing and I had it like this. And I'm just like freaking, it was a different version of this. But, and I slipped out and I just gouged the scale. I ended up trading that one for this knife straight up. Uh, my buddy Doug traded it and um, he didn't mind the scratch or anything like that. And man, this one's special to me for a couple of reasons, but one of them is because it's got a connection to, to Dougie. But um, if you look at this pivot, you'll see there's tooling on this side. You have a T20 over here. T20, not T15 like I thought in that video. Long time ago, but it was a good learning experience. Right here, you'll see a show side blank pivot. Now, normally what that would tell you is what? There's a captive pivot, right? There's a D shape in here. There's something going on so that when you loosen this, it just comes right out, right? Because you can't put a bit over here to help you get it out. Well, something stupid that CKF did on this design was not do that. This is a free spinning pivot with tooling on one side. So if you do what a lot of people do when they take their knife apart for the first time or whatever, they Loctite it. And if you Loctite it, what happens? Well, now it can spin because it's Loctited and you have nothing over here to help you loosen this. You have nothing cap capturing the pivot to help you unscrew this. So what you can't do with this knife really is Loctite it unless you're cool with just applying heat over here and loosening it later. It does work, honestly. Heat will take care of it pretty quick but you know you got carbon fiber you got you know it's it's a thing but what i ended up doing with this is using an o-ring so i found a certain size o-ring i don't know the size i got it from ocd for edc i got lucky and i just tried it and it worked i put an o-ring in there on the pivot screw tighten it down it goes dead center i have absolutely no play in any direction i can tighten and loosen if i want Right there, you saw me in the beginning, I tightened this down. Um, and it doesn't loosen up. So I don't have to Loctite this. And that's a huge thing with this knife because it would suck if um, you had to worry about that all the time. Now, I guess for most people, you'd probably just take it apart, clean it, tighten it, Loctite, put a little bit of Loctite, Loctite it, let it sit, and maybe probably never touch it again. I'm a fiddler. I mess with my knives a lot. I tweak things. I wanted to... In the beginning of this video, I wanted to tighten it to make it a little less drop shut, etc. That sucks when you're dealing with Loctite, you know? So that's a major difference on the knives. On this one, they went ahead and they did tooling on both sides. So you have a T20 on both sides on this guy, um, which is a big difference because now you can Loctite your knife. You can do whatever you want. I did put the O-ring back in. I had another one. I put the O-ring in this one. And I just couldn't get it tight enough to where it wouldn't guillotine shut. Um, everything I did, no matter how tight I did it, it would just it would just want to take my finger off. And this sucker is even heavier <laughs> and bigger than this one. And this one is the one that started my issues with my thumbnails. Because it literally cracked 
through the nail and drew blood. Um, so I'm trying to be careful about that. So I tight, I tried to get it tighter and I just couldn't with the O-ring. So what I did was I took that out and I super glued it. You guys know I like to use super glue instead of Loctite. So what I did was I super glued this pivot pretty dang tight. It's dead centered, all the stuff. It works fine, all that good stuff. Still smooth, but it takes a little bit to close. Um, I do wish I had backed off a little bit more. So one thing with super glue you can't control is uh, you can't really just fine tune things. So I'm hoping this will slowly break in and it will become more of a guillotine. I don't want it to be crazy, but you can already see it's almost there. Um, there is no pivot lash, I mean, or uh, detent lash, maybe a little bit of movement, but I, I wouldn't call it lash. If you do this, you're not feeling anything shake. On this one, there's no movement at all, but the detent is lighter on this one, so it just wants to kind of come out before you even get to feeling anything but uh they're very similar in detent not super strong i prefer this one by a little bit um it does flick a little bit better on that reverse flick but they're both really good both feel good in action um yeah they're fantastic knives i will say I started off pretty mild on the 3.0. I wasn't that ex I wasn't that excited. Sorry, something fell over there and freaked me out. Um, I wasn't that excited about this knife. I honestly thought it was just gonna be uh, and then sell, right? Um, but I got this one from I got this from Kyle DTM Knives and Gear. I actually bought it off him. And I actually really like it. It has the Zerk backspacer. I threw this clip on it, the pivot collar, the hand satin. Having this in a version that's not my Carta is so much nicer. That's plain and simple. That black wash sucked. Um, I would like to try the super shiny black one at some point, but, um, you know, I've just bought enough stuff. I don't need to go buy in a second Evo 3.0, but hey, you never know. I might do it. Um, the one cool thing about this one is I am going to have work done on it by Nathan, hopefully. Nathan's Knives. He does hand modding and stuff like that. And my plan is to have him try to sort of replicate a carbon scale. So it may not be this carbon because I do really like this shred carbon fiber on here. I think it matches the knife really well. It gives you that monochrome gray and black look and i think i'll try to stick with something like that like black camo carbon like what if you saw this this camo carbon on here i think that would look sick something like that so it's not crazy colors or anything um, and i think that'll bring the weight down it'll match these nicely and i think it'll make it a much better knife for me but i personally am really digging it as is now um, is there any difference in use? So I did uh, use these to cut some shipping labels uh, the last couple of days to kind of see where I was at with it. And at first I was thinking the 3.0 is better. Um, it feels really good in the hand. I can get really good control of this tip. It is like a sheep's foot sort of clip point look. And you can get to that tip and slice pretty good with it. So I was thinking this was better because I didn't remember the 2.0 being the best for shipping labels. But then I picked it up and it's literally the same. Now the thing I noticed is because of the, sh the shorter knife here, I end up getting to that belly a lot quicker. I'm kind of like sitting on that belly and then going up to the tip to use it. Where this, I seem to just go right to the tip. It's almost like, I don't know if the belly is maybe because that point comes out a little bit further because it's a bigger knife. I don't know, but it just felt a little bit quicker to the tip. It's not much of a difference. It doesn't really mean anything, but I wanted to point it out. Um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, there's not a huge bunch of differences, honestly, guys. They're both uh, extremely cool knives, very similar knives. Um you know, you can see the design is a little bit different. If you look at the at the uh, jimping there, if you see how it goes up, steps up to this jimping right here, where this one, it just looks a little bit different. I don't know if there's one less jimp. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five jimps. That's why. Just looked a little different to me. Um, otherwise, extremely similar. You know what I mean? Um, you can front flip these. I haven't really tried it left-handed, but there you go. Pops out real easy. I always struggled with this one. It ripped my uh, it ripped my skin a little bit more. Yeah, it's just a little bit harder on your skin. I don't know why. Ooh, ow. I don't know. It's about the same. Not the best thing in the world, to be honest, for front flipping. There is a detent ramp on these, and I hate it. Um, just doesn't feel right. This one's fine because it kind of just clears it. I don't know. There's a difference where it just swings. It immediately passes that detent. Where this one, I feel like I'm always waiting for it to clear. Right, I'm like waiting for it to get past. Now that could just be a case of this knife is older and I've used the shit out of it, flicked the shit out of it. The detent is a little lighter. Could be something to do with that. Lock bar pressure just kind of swings down a little better. Um, these bearings have been worn in, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, fantastic knives. I'm really pleased with this, honestly. Way more than I expected to be, so... There you go. Evo 2.0 and Evo 3.0 comparison. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, do you have one? Do you have both? Do you want one or the other? Um, there's also the 1.0. I, I almost want to try to hunt one down just to have it, but it was abnormally big and annoying, and it, it just, I didn't like it. Um, it's just too big for me personally. And they're like really hard to get at this point and probably crazy expensive. Would I like to see a 4.0 is the question. And I'm sure everybody's out there talking about this. What would a 4.0 look like? Would it be smaller? Would it be bigger again? Where would that fall, right? Um, would they do one in between these two? Because that's, that's already really close. You're talking about half an inch. Would they do one smaller than this? Um, this is a three and a half inch blade, I think, right? And it fits my hand really well back here. So if you went even smaller on this, I don't know if it would be great. This is definitely not a large knife. So uh, I don't know. It'd be interesting if they went smaller, how much smaller, right? Um, would it be a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. It'd be really interesting. I would love them to just remake the 2.0 with stronger detents. Same great drop action, but stronger detents. That's, that can be done nowadays. Um, and just different carbon fibers, fat carbons. Like, you can go ham. Like, I don't understand why they went with that micarta version on this. You know, you have all the fat carbon in the world, but I just think... Um, when, when it, um, when it came out, it was like two years ago and my Carter was hot. So maybe they just went with it. I don't know. Anyway, I love you guys uh, very much. Shout out to CKF. Shout out to Rotten Design. John Sorensen has a wonderful design here. Fantastic knife. I really do love it. Um, and, uh, yeah, love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you later.